Hey all, happy Friday. Now, a lot of people ask me over the years about problem solving, data analysis, technical inference, and all that kind of stuff around technical root cause. How do you rapidly get to the correct answer and the fastest route possible, right, to resolve issues? So I gave this talk a few years ago to a large uh, kind of group at a conference in Breckenridge, and I finally went into engineering problem solving, the master level and the tools we use, and I simplified them hugely for the lay person. So people are wondering, how did I get so many things overwhelmingly correct from the various early days of the viral issue? Well, this short presentation should give you a good idea of at least a window or a slight view of the tools that are used in order to, as close as possible, guarantee correctness when data is complex and multi-factor. So enjoy. And I'm going to show you three tools that we use uh, when you're managing and structuring uh, and organizing a problem-solving effort, which might have up to 100 or more engineers all around the world working on one problem, the really big ones. And this is the is-is-not analysis, or kepner trago and basically what you do is you take myriad factors in the problem and you organize them under what, where, when, and extent. And you scrutinize them. And you look at what is the problem and what is not the problem. So an example might be if you have cardiac stents and model A, B, and C have worked well, but model D happens to have a lot of issues. Well, then the problem is model D and is not model A, B, C. And the distinctions in design are the things to focus on. So it doesn't mean you'll get the problem and you'll find the root cause, but it will point you towards the right factors to look at, to investigate. And basically, this tool integrates the logic of the problem. It analyzes correlations, scrutinizes coincidences, it highlights conflicts in the logic, and it prioritizes likely causes. And in the nutritional and medical world, it's kind of epidemiological studies would line up with this tool. But this is a very structured way to do it. This tool will end up with hundreds of entries. All must be scrutinized, because you may miss something otherwise. The second of three tools I'll show you is the root cause diagram. You don't need to read this. <laughs> And it's one from a problem a few years ago that I was involved on, and this is an excerpt from it. And basically, I'm going to zoom in to show you the intents. So you have to put down the causal chain for all your proposed factors, right? In a multi-factor problem, there could be 10 things that are important and another 150 that are not. And the red circle shows where you've got a lot of evidence for a potential causal link in the chain. And then the gray with the red outline means you have substantial evidence, and the gray means you have very little evidence. So we also categorize within the diagram. Very importantly, though, all your causal chain that A causes B, C, D, and then causes your ultimate problem, you've got to put on every arrow the scientific mechanism, the physics. If something causes something else, you must show what the mechanism is and prove their science. That's the discipline in engineering. And it's a discipline that's missing in a lot of other places. So every link must have good scientific mechanisms. So in summary, the second tool, integrate the mechanisms, ensure sound science, leverage team expertise, highlight conflicts again, most importantly, prioritize the likely causes and downgrade unlikely hypotheses. It's very important to push down bad hypotheses or you'll waste time. Last tool, and again, you don't have to read this, it's the hypothesis for against tool. And here's where you gather all of the evidence for a given hypothesis and against it. This shows one hypothesis. We might have 20 or 25 starting a big problem, and you need to get to the real one, okay? And basically, you get the evidence for, evidence against, put it all down there, and always keep your eye on it and get the whole team engaged. Because if you miss out on evidence against, you'll waste your time and the business's money working on a BS hypothesis. And we've seen a few of those in the nutritional world, right? So in summary, weigh up the evidence base with this tool, leverage expertise again, scrutinize conflicts, very important. But most importantly, prioritize the best hypotheses and kill the weak ones. And don't waste time. 
So if you do these three tools very well and the master problem solver manages them and, and gets them all done really good, logs everything, right? Big team sessions. That's actually, as per Pareto, only 10% of the work. It's crucial, but it's only 10%, 20%. Most of the work occurs in integration. In integration, what we do is we use the most powerful optical microscopes in the world. We use scanning electron microscopes for our products to autopsy and analyze and find what's wrong. We do countless experiments, right, all well designed, and to find out what factors are more important. We do statistics, data mining on huge data sets. We also do um, statistical significance design of experiments so we know we've got a real result and a real extent of impact from an experiment we do. We also do research. If we don't have the physics of what's going on in the problem, we do external research if we don't have prior art in that area. And we do emergency response. We do product recalls to protect the customer and to get parts back that have failed for autopsy with the scanning electron or with all the other tools we use. This is a feverish hotbed of activity because everything affects everything else. The parts you get back affect your experimental design, affect your learnings from autopsy. It's a miasma. It's basically, it gets really intense. It's not for everyone, especially the big ones where there's a lot of money at stake. But if you do this part well, and you do it all properly and structured, what happens is you get rapid time to resolution and you get to the primary causes quickly and they're the correct ones. And when you fix them, you put a robust fix in place for the business and the problem doesn't reoccur. If you don't do this properly, what happens? Well, I'll tell you what happens. You get band-aids put in and that's our term for a quick fix that seems to mitigate the problem and gets you out of a hole. But what happens is six months later, the band-aid slips, the problem reoccurs, people have moved on and the business takes a hit. So we call problem solving engineers who are poor, we call them band-aid merchants. <laughs> and it's a very pejorative term, believe me, right? We, we do better than that. Hope you enjoyed that. And as always, thanks so much to my Patreon and PayPal supporters. That's what keeps the show on the road here. And any new supporters who can come along, however small, always appreciated to bring analysis and insight into what's going on in the world today in the health and indeed geopolitics kind of areas and countering the corporate nonsense media in as much as we can. So the links are all down below and of course please do like, subscribe and share uh, the information in as much as possible because we're heading into a very difficult period in the coming years. God knows we've been through an outrageously insane mass formation period of the past two years now the inflation is racking up, uh, the money printing has been on full power now for many, many years. The graphs from my financial analyses uh, are quite shocking, even to me. And uh, things are going to get challenging. But always remember to stay cool, calm, and when you come up against people who are deluded, uh, like in the last couple of years, you know, refer to published papers, ask questions, stay calm, don't go off flying off the handle and that's the only way we can successfully counter this kind of mass formation madness that uh, luckily now is tailing off on the viral issue but there'll be more issues to come of that we can be sure so thanks so much for your support and till next time